The planet is heating up. The oceans are becoming filled with plastic. Change starts now. Change starts now. We're on a countdown to zero waste. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the Zero Waste Countdown Podcast. Here's your host, Laura Nash. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Zero Waste Countdown podcast and radio show. Today, we're speaking with Sarah Midland-Jones. She's the Community Outreach Specialist from Bay of Quinney Remedial Action Plan, and she's going to tell us all about my local Bay of Quinney. Uh, It used to be kind of a mess and a bit of a problem, and decades and decades of work has cleaned it up significantly. So welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Cool. And so your job is community outreach specialist. So have you been with uh, Bay of Quinney RAP? So remedial action plan, I'm just going to call it RAP. So if you ever hear me say RAP for the rest of the show, that's what it means. (laughs) Yeah. No, that's just fine. That's what everybody calls it. Yeah. So have you been with them for a while? Um, I've been here about um, 12 years now. Wow. Okay, great. So you would have seen a lot of uh, progress, I assume. Yeah, there's been a lot of changes over the years. The Bay of Quinty is uh, now a very healthy and vibrant ecosystem. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, we plan on keeping it that way. I really hope so. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk about kind of how we got there and stuff. But um So I like to focus on the show like positive things. So people who start businesses that are sustainable or that have good ideas or that are pushing tech forward. And so I love this story about the Bay of Quinney because uh, there used to be a giant dump right on the shore. And my my mom, um, I think she remembers it. So I want to get into the history of the dump and, and how we cleaned that up and stuff. But let's go back even further. Um, so Belleville kind of started out, I guess, as this, uh, this town for logs. So logging was really big here. They'd send logs down, down the river. And then you can actually get from Belleville out to the Atlantic Ocean through the St. Lawrence Seaway. Um, so can you tell us anything about kind of that history, like going back into the 1800s? I assume some steamships uh, would have been coming in. Yep, the, the bay basically has the same history of any sort of port or um, waterfront along the Great Lakes system, right? So for the bay, the system started to change about 200 years ago with people sort of arriving in the area and changing the landscape. So before colonists arrived, most of this area was trees, And then, of course, as everybody arrived, the trees started getting cut down, shipped down river, opening it up for um, agricultural use and to build towns and cities. And as that process happened, then there was a lot of sort of changes on the landscape. A lot of sediment ended up in the water. A lot of it, a lot of stuff ended up in the water. And with that, the water changed, like algae. There was significant algae blooms in the times. Back in the day, every industry was placed along the shoreline for the sake of transportation routes and for um, storage and also for getting rid of waste. Everything ended up in the water. Uh, Luckily, we've gone past that. But those sort of things over the years are what got a lot of water bodies to be highly polluted. And the Bay of Quinty is no different. And as change happened over the years, we, uh, you, you mentioned the Swix. Well, that was over the years developed and now into it's a, a giant park. But again, a lot of um, cities and towns along, along the waterfronts had exactly the same issue. I think if you go to any small town, um, you'll find that dumps were put on shorelines. Yeah, and we know that around the world, this is still happening today where people just throw their trash into rivers or they throw it into the ocean because they just want to get rid of it, right? So if I have some trash and there's a moving river next to me, if I throw it in the moving river, I don't have to deal with it. So that's, uh, I think rivers are like trash highways, (laughs) 
which is unfortunate yeah. <laughs> for all sorts of, of waste problems. And then, of course, the, the Moira River empties right into the Bay of Quinney, uh, where Swix Island is. So if you come to visit Belleville or if you're listening from Belleville, you'll obviously know where Swix is. And you may have even went tobogganing on the Swix Hill. And now I think, is that giant hill that the kids toboggan on now, is that the old dump? Uh, that side, um, the east side of Swix, is it the east side? No, it's the west side. The west side of Swix, sorry, is where it used to be. And the other oh, part, okay, all so of, yeah, the Swix is divided into the two sides, right? So the one, yeah, it was the where the original dump was. And then the other side, which was built again with a lot of fill being brought in, it's back in the 60s, I believe, changing it into a park and was a centennial project, actually. A centennial project? Like, yeah, like I a, believe. Like Canada's 100th project? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's, uh, so yeah, that got it changed into a park. And uh, then uh, several years down the road, the other side of it was developed. And so now it's, it's a huge park that, people go down and enjoy and there's festivals down there and there's a great kids playground down there and a waterfront trail that's really popular with locals and tourists alike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the only clue that someone might get that it used to be a dump is that uh, you can still see where the methane is pumped out, right? Uh, it comes up through the ground occasionally. <laughs> yeah, you can see it on the light standards. On the light standards the, they, they look a little darker on the bottom so but um now the, those sort of processes are, are sort of winding down right as as anything dumps have lifespans and uh go through various changes over the years so and Zwix has done the same thing and uh now it's it's well monitored for any issues with it and um it certainly become more of a attraction to the area than than a detriment to the area. So how did we contain the dump? So how is it not leaking into the bay when it's right on the bay? So those sort of, well, like I said, they go through a life process when it was probably first done. It probably did. It leached. Uh, the, yeah, it did. And uh, But as the years have gone by, that process has diminished significantly. And now any water that comes off that site is, is monitored and to make sure that it's, it's, it's in good shape. And so what kind of monitoring are we looking at? So what are the processes to monitor um, in the water? Are you monitoring the air as well or just in the water? What, uh, for us, it's it's the water. So, but um, that comes under the Ministry of the Environment, and uh, they would have they have monitoring sites on the on the perk around the perk and check the water quality. So the water quality is monitored. So, what do they look for when they're monitoring the water? Are they looking for heavy metals, pollutants, phosphorus? Um, what are they? searching for that would make the water unclean? So for the Bay of Quinty, the main issue with it has always been the amount of phosphorus entering it. And um, that is sort of from, from a variety of sources, right? So phosphorus is, is a natural element, but it's the excess of it that causes problems because that causes uh, algae blooms in the water. And... Um, Though that's for the wrap, that has been our sort of main focus is reducing the amount of phosphorus that enters the bay from both rural, urban and industrial sources. Yeah, so I think it didn't wasn't there a program to try and get farmers to stop farming right along the water? So there's been all sorts of programs over the years. We still offer stewardship programs to um, help reduce phosphorus loads to the bay. Um, agricultural stewardship is part of that program. So farmers over the years have come a very long way and have certainly been big supporters of the Remedial Action Plan 
program and they participate um, by doing a lot of stewardship activities on their on their lands because they understand yeah that uh, they understand erosion and and runoff is is not good for water quality mm -hmm. what's a stewardship activity so things like um, keeping cattle out of streams those sort mm -hmm. of things um, erosion uh, control uh, structures um, planting cover crops so to keep the soil the more soil and you can keep the more soil you can keep covered um, the less runs off it it soaks into it so those sort of things farmers have been big supporters big supporters of we offer a soil testing program to sort of let them know sort of what the nutrient levels in their their soils are to help them with their crops and also to help them with the amount of fertilizer and things they apply to their fields Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, do you have more information about the the landfill? Like, I'm curious to wonder how they, how are we able to stop the leaching? Because it just seems like if you build a dump right along the water, things would always be leaking into it if it's underground. But um, for some reason, it's it's not leaking into the bay anymore. Is that right? Well, it's like I said, all those sort of things have a different life. They have a life cycle. Right, of things that sort of degrade over time, and that bay, that that area is now it was changed back in the '60s, so that's over sort of 40, 50 years ago now, and so over that time, um, what was leaching from that that area has certainly been significantly reduced, and like I said, it's monitored now for water quality issues now so if there was any concerns then um they would be addressed but for now i think uh yeah the the swix island like i said is certainly more of a benefit to the area than than a detriment to it so it's almost like it is run out of leaching uh, well they, it's yes yeah, one way to put it they certainly go through a, a life cycle yeah so what factors do you consider uh, when labeling the Bay of Quinney clean? So we, you said that you're monitoring phosphorus. So what are some other indicators that the Bay of Quinney is healthy? Over the years, when the Bay was originally designated an area of concern, there were four issues. And that was um, loss of fish and wildlife habitats, excess nutrients, which is excess phosphorus, bacterial contamination, and toxic chem contamination. But the main issue has always been the phosphorus. So those four areas were uh, then put into categories, which we call environmental challenges, so they could be monitored and assessed. And over the years, we've sort of addressed those environmental challenges, and they're things like uh, loss of fish and wildlife habitat, beach closings, drinking water, issues with drinking water. So all those sort of things, they each would develop to have criteria and targets that had to be met. And as they sort of have, as the remedial action plan has been implemented, those targets and criteria have been met. And we now have, there were originally 11 environmental challenges, and we are now down to the final four. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so what are some of the ones that were kind of completed? So are the, is the fish and wildlife habitat, is that still one of those four? No. That you're still working nope. on? No, those have been nice. restored. Yep, those are all nice. fish, wildlife, uh, habitats, populations are all doing really well in the bay. So those Good. have been, they've met, they met all their criteria and uh, they are certainly, well, has, the bay is known for its, for its fishery. Yeah, the walleye, right? I've heard it's some of the best walleye fishing in the world. Yep, yep. No, the bay is, is well known 
well-renowned for its walleye fishery. And each year there are a lot of tourists that come to the area just just to go fishing. Mm -hmm. Was there an issue with, with zebra mussels in the Bay of Quinney like a while ago? Uh, zebra mussels are an issue all over the Great Lakes. It's uh, like any invasive species. It's it's best to keep them out because once you've got them, you've got you've got them, and uh, the bay is no different than the rest of the Great Lakes system with zebra mussel with zebra mussel issues. And it it cleans out the water a lot, but what is the problem with them that it it eats too much of the the nutrients in the water or something? They're filter feeders. So zebra mussels are filter feeders and they um, filter sort of the, the phytoplankton and some of the species of phytoplankton, they, they will eat some of them that they won't eat. But then what zebra mussels do after they eat it, they, um, how do I politely put this, they, they poop some of it back out. And so, and that, and that is um, where they add phosphorus back to the the ecosystem. But they oh, certainly, yeah. So, but they certainly, as a filter feeder, they certainly have um, they clear the water. Yeah. So they can clean the water, but then they could cause algal blooms later. Is yeah, that right? They, is that they, they, yeah, because well, they they're part of part of the issue right it's never just one thing uh with with any ecosystem it's always a variety of things it's never just one thing that uh causes an issue so but yeah they they sort of they have a double edge to them because they do clean they, they do filter the water but they also put phosphorus back into the water mm -hmm. so with the uh you know, it's really an issue with pipelines in this country. Um, we've had some being canceled, and then Michigan is trying to cancel Line 5. Um, and so my worry for the Bay of Quinney is that we have the train tracks right next to the bay. So is this on your radar at all, that, you know, the the rails being so close to the water that it could be an issue with all the, the oil and gas and even just like chemicals that are going by there on a, a daily basis? That's not something that would be um, covered under the under the remedial action plan. Um, those, yeah, that is not something. Our our focus has always been sort of the water itself, and um, we don't really have much much to yeah implement on on those sort of on railway tracks or those sort of things, pipelines. You might have to do some some remediation if it happens, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, um, if anything ever happened, well, that would come under the the Ministry of uh, the Environment, and they have a spills action center that would be all over that. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, yeah. Because I worry about that because it just seems like the the bay. You know, people have went through such a great effort to clean it up and done such a good job um, that I hope it stays that way. Do you have any recommendations for anyone in the local area for kind of clean practices if they're around the bay or anything like that to help keep it clean? Um, for one of the programs that we offer and that we're sort of kind of ramping up a little more this year is we offer an urban stewardship program that uh, for people to put in um, rain gardens which will help with stormwater runoff. So on most people's property, they don't realize that sort of the amount of, what, say it rains or the snow melt, uh, either one, that water generally just sort of runs over all the hard surfaces on their properties and then ends up going down the storm sewer. And a lot of that water that goes down the storm sewer just ends up going straight into the nearest body of water untreated. So if we can slow down and reduce the amount of uh, that runoff, that is certainly a big help to phosphorus levels and uh, that run into into the bay. So this year we're offering this 
the opportunity for people to put rain gardens uh, on their on their property. We will offer a five hundred dollar grant to help them with that. And uh, it's for the yeah, it's for the urban areas around the bay. So I would encourage people to go take a look at our website, which is www.bqrap.ca, and you'll find all the information on there about what the eligibility requirements are and and how to apply. Nice. So bqrap.ca. BQ yes. Rap. Yep. Nice. Yeah, that's a that's a great thing to do. I think we had a show on a while ago about six PPD. It's a, a chemical that's that gets produced um, from tires, and it was found to be killing the coho salmon out in the west coast, but not so much other kinds of salmon. So it was very like species specific, and uh, so that would be good for that too, right? Because a lot of um, a lot of tires would be wearing down on our roads and our parking lots and stuff, and so if that's just fun funneling right out into the bay it would probably be better if it ran through some dirt or something first or like a, a garden like you're saying right yep so it acts as it acts as a filter so as that sort of storm water runs off it, it picks up all sorts of things like you said um everything from leaves and debris to yeah oil and grit that's on the roads and so if there's any way we can if people can sort of help stop that running down from their properties and down into the storm sewers, then uh, it's a, it'll be every bit helps, right? Totally. Yeah. And like plastic pollution, I see around Belleville quite a lot and cigarettes. There's a lot of people who still throw their cigarette butts out the windows. And I think those can end up um, getting into the bay quite a bit, right? Cause they're quite small and they can go down those, those storm yeah. drains, which is, yeah, which is too bad. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a bad yeah. bad all the way around. So, and I guess, and that's just people really need to be more aware of of their personal practices, right? And to sort of think about, yeah. And I don't think a lot of people realize that what does go down the storm sewer, just in a lot of areas, just ends up going straight into the nearest body of water. And around here, that's the Bay of Quinte. So, if people sort of can. Yeah, don't throw your cigarette butts out the window. And if it's and things like even if it's windy and you put your recycling out, just put something over the top of it so the plastic bags don't blow away. Or better, maybe use recycle, recyclable bags instead of picking up plastic bags at the grocery store. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, it's, sometimes it can get very windy on the bay, right? So a lot of uh, stuff gets blown around. And when people are at work, right, they're not there to go and collect it again. And then I find once it's off people's driveways, they feel like it's not their responsibility anymore. And so they'll just kind of leave it instead of picking <laughs> it up. So um, yeah, if we can keep it from blowing into the bay, that would be good too. And then cigarette butts are cellulose acetate. They're a type of plastic uh, for those listening. So it's um they can soak up a lot of toxins and we tried to get them some cigarette programs around Belleville but all they ended up doing was putting a couple of these tiny tiny little uh what are they called like receptacles basically but you ah. can hardly see them and there was there were no efforts to really get the information out so if something like you want to stop people from polluting their cigarette butts all over the place because most of them are honestly probably ending up in the bay when you throw your cigarette butt out the window right um yeah so i think you would need to be like a big kind of communications program and a push right to to make people aware of this and that if you're going to go and fish walleye but you're going to throw cigarette butts in the bay you're kind of like polluting your own dinner <laughs> <laughs> yes so. yes <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, people just yeah, yeah. Sometimes they just need to think a little about about what they're doing and and realize that everything is connected. And people tend to sort of forget sometimes that yeah, your your pers your habits are all connected to something down the road, whether that's your cigarette butts or whether that's sort of even things like washing your car in the driveway and letting that run down the storm sewers or so. Everything is connected in some way back to the water. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're lucky to, to have the bay here. So I lived in Victoria in British Columbia for a long time on the ocean. And I, when I first got back to Belleville, I thought it was very similar. So beautiful bay. I mean, not in the winter, but in the summer, <laughs> beautiful bay, nice parks. Um, there's nice waterfront trails. You don't get the smell of the ocean because sometimes the ocean can no. really stink. Um, <laughs> so you don't get that in the bay. You can get some gulches that maybe smell a bit weird in August or something, but it's not nothing like the ocean. Trust me. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of sailing here and boating and fishing and it's beautiful. It's nice. I like it a lot. So um, it's good to hear that there's lots of efforts to clean it up and that those efforts uh, continue to be monitored. It's great. Yep. So no, we're working away. And then next, as the remedial action plan starts to wind down and uh, we're leaving a we're working on a phosphorus management strategy for the bay to ensure that it's uh, maintained and that it remains sort of a vibrant and healthy ecosystem well into the future. So there's always sort of things that come along. There's climate change that's coming along. And, uh, more, of course, everybody these days wants to live on the waterfront, so development. And so we need to sort of – our part of the remedial action plan is is getting close to completion, but there is still all sorts of things that need to be done because of yeah upcoming issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because we had some flooding like two years in a row, I think it was, but I think that was more because of a dam, right? Well, the yeah, the lake levels were very high in 2017 and 2019. And uh, the Moses Saunders Dam at Cornwall has a little influence over water levels, but mostly water levels on the Great Lakes system are influenced by uh, natural forces, like the amount of snow melt, precipitation. Both those years we had a uh, big snowpack and the spring were extremely wet. Springs were extremely wet. So... Those, that was the main issue with those high water levels was the sort of, yeah, the amount of precipitation uh, we received in, in the Great Lakes Basin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was, it was right up into the park um, for quite a while there. I remember those, those years. Um, yeah, this is good to, to hear about. So were there any other um, issues you wanted to speak about, about uh, Bay Quinney Wrap? Um, no, I, I'm just like, I would encourage people to sort of uh, do things, the personal things, the, the, the sort of the small things that they might think, oh, that's not going to make a whole lot of difference, but it does make a lot of difference, right? So like you said, the cigarette thing, um, recycling, if you put in a rain garden, all those sort of things. If you're out along the bay shore and you're walking the trail and you see some plastic, pick it up. Like every every little mm -hmm. thing count. Every little thing counts. And if we all sort of chip in and do our bit, then we'll be able to keep the bay in the in the great condition that it is now in. So, but it takes it takes a little commitment from everybody. Yeah, that's some great advice. I like it. You know, I, I heard too that sunscreen can affect the corals and stuff in the ocean. So I wonder if there's anything in sunscreen that would, would hurt anything in freshwater bays. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure of that either. I heard about the coral, but I, I, I don't know about freshwater. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things, right? Just like <laughs> you're saying that, uh, that can affect, affect everything too. So awesome. Cool. Well, that was Sarah Midlane Jones. She's the Community Outreach Specialist from Bay of Quinney Remedial Action Plan, talking about how we cleaned up the Bay of Quinney here in Belleville over many, many decades um, of, of a lot of different things happening in this bay. And we actually have a nice, healthy bay for fishing and swimming and uh, going to the parks and enjoying. So thank you, Sarah, for telling us all about that. Oh, that's my pleasure. Thank you very much for uh, having me on your show. Change starts now. This is the Zero Waste Countdown Podcast.